There's the ramshackle commune. There is a small village here, scraped together, scrapped together from old wood. Whoever built this was not very forward-thinking. As you step into the area, a shriveled little creature notices you. Pigs! Pigs coming! Protect King! The guard ran off. Needs an ordinary key. You have 25. Can't just like to bash open the wall. Let's check out the rest of the place first. Before I get to murdering, let's see if uh, this place really is bad. They may just think I'm an intruder, which, you know, even in the event of a mistaken identity, if someone raises an arm against Brand, it's fair game, I, I say. Thank the gods. Did you get them all? Yes, I totally did. My name is Shapiro, and I am, or was, a professor of sorcery. When I came under attack by these creatures, naturally I used my sorcery to defend myself. It worked, I suppose, for they were certainly in awe of me, but then they dragged me back here and said I was their king. They didn't ever plan to let me leave, and there were far more than I could hope to overcome alone, so I had no choice but to play along. Rest assured, I have no love for these diminutive savages, and I was never their king. He takes a deep breath and looks around. I've got to get out of this place, and as for you, sack it, loot it, claim it, or burn it to the ground for all I care. If there's anything of use to you, it's all yours. I just want out. And thanks. Perhaps if I'd been clever, I might have turned this rabble into something destructive. Ah, uh, well, I don't really care. I'm not sure what brought you to this place, but I'm certain enough that it wasn't for the purpose of rescuing me. Whatever you came here to do, I won't stop you. Have a picnic, or better yet, a bonfire. I never want to see another pygmy again. Go with you? I must say I like the thought of being in the company of someone taller than waist height for a while. Why not? Well, it isn't as though I have anything to gather up, so let's be off. The sooner we quit this place, the better. Not everyone can be like Bran Shapiro. Hard won victory. I think it says something that we haven't seen any statues of this facade fellow. You can search his archive if you want, but if you ask me, Sparto is the fellow to be chasing. I'd go to his lodge to look for more clues. Alright, now let's complete Fastad's archive. 
Von Kano should be plenty enough to do the thwart challenge. A private archive bearing stately and official ornamentation, it looks as though all of the windows have been plastered over and the dark air hangs heavy over the building. This is Fastad's private study. I was here only once before. He was the last person I saw before meeting you. In fact, he came to the Obliette and whatever he did, I suppose, is what spared me from the island's fate. He was a clever man and a good friend. Perhaps something useful can be found here. This place! This is important! Where this Fastad was, he began something here. Something that has waited out the centuries for you to find it. I don't know what waits within, but whatever it is, we should take it very seriously. Alright everybody, keep your eyes peeled. Worst of two. Really like the critical and the lucky, but I, I think this might. I don't know. Here, you carry both. If you fight one dude, you'll use the shadow song. I started to click, click through it, and I don't think I read it earlier, so I'm gonna, or read it a lot earlier, so I decided to click all the way through it so I could read it to you. The journal on the table is left open to the final entry. The lattice is laid out. All that remains is to assemble the fetish and to weave the proper energy around it. I haven't been able to secure nearly enough black glass, however, and I don't think I could find a suitably skilled craftsman in this social climate. Blast my luck. There is no more time. I shall have to attempt the ritual shorthanded. If this succeeds, then I hope to strike a bargain with it being great enough to save us. If it fails, I suspect that an eternity drift the sea of stars awaits me. We shall see if I tire of the view. I pray that Maxim renders my efforts unnecessary. Astounding! Can you feel that? The veins here are wide open, positively rushing through this room. Whatever this is, it's meant to channel an incredible magnitude of power, and the veins have been cultivated to provide it. My recommendation is that we begin careful study and experimentation immediately. This is surely important. The altar is laid out in a purposeful fashion. It looks as though something is meant to be placed here as part of the ritual. Use the Devil Adonis to complete the ritual with the crystals in this configuration. You gently position the Devil Adonis in the center of the altar and attempt to complete the ritual. You focus the threads of mana onto the Devil Donuts. It glitters intensely for a moment. Something went wrong. The Donuts shatters into a million shards of obsidian, and the mana in the room goes still. Wait, what? Was I supposed to put them on after I lit the crystals? My bad. Well, the crystals are supposed to light up are these two here. Uh, you have Pour and Tuss. And the lady, she kept saying, like, poor Tom, and, you know, she couldn't really quite make it out. But it's not well. It doesn't sound like it. Lim might be. Might sound like what you think the Queen's Diary was referring to. And full doesn't really sound like it, so. It's real. It, oh, here's one over here as well. Kai. So really, you've just got these two. Alright, so, um, let me load and try that one again. So activate poor Toss. With a spine-chilling howl, the very fabric of being is split open, and a frothing gateway is laid open. The air in the room grows thin, and one by one, you and your band drop to the floor. Alert. Captain escaping bonds. Terminated. Blue cut. Simulation. Nah, that's just post-production humor. But that really is the screenshot for the game right now. Let's go to the actual narration.
For a long moment, you feel as if you are being unmade, and your vision fades to darkness. The voices of your companions drift off into the ether. Ribbons of pallid light drift past as a great expanse of churning darkness yawns open before you. As if guided by an invisible current, you drift toward a black knot of something solid fading into your vision. A castle set adrift in the great nothing. You drift nearer still, and your feet gently make contact with the ground. Wherever this is, it seems the only way to go is to venture inside. Demon Lord's Castle I am not interested in talking, mortal. If you are here for the party, then enter the palace and present yourself to Lord Barrowed. Keep your distance, mortal. I have no interest in harming you. Well, I have interest in harming you. There's communal hookah here. Will you take a puff? Explore first, then I'll talk to you. I see a yellow. Let me see if the gatekeeper is also yellow on the minimap. Yeah, he is. So people I can talk to might be yellow. That will save a little bit of time. Oh, for a second I thought he was like winged and he had really cool wings. No, those, those are imps. I know. Some others up on the area, but I'll break no nonsense in the archive. <laughs> Through one door or another, leave. There are several books on the table written in languages you do not understand. One, however, you can read The Commanding Oak. If they all turned on me, it would be worth so much experience, because they could not take down Bran. I could slaughter every one of them. Is there really no, nothing up there? There's seriously nothing up here of interest. to be here, love. This party ain't even been started yet, huh? Kinda figured, yeah.
guess that's everything. Every demon in this place looks monstrous, but the throne is occupied by an ordinary looking man. He is stark naked, his body splashed with thick tracks of black hair, and his beard is twisted into an improbable point. He catches your gaze, and his eyes shred through you from head to toe. There can be no doubt that this man, unassuming though he may appear, is a frighteningly potent demon. He makes a respectful gesture and calls out to you. Welcome, mortal, to my domain. I am Lord Barrow. Time is irrelevant here, so please make yourself at home and enjoy the party. Come and find me when you have had your fill of pleasure and we shall discuss business. Time to discuss your business, yes? Very well. Soon you will come up against something tremendous. Perhaps you know this already. Sunken one, he is like I am, a being that exists outside of the mortal space. But he's bound to it by great divine chains. These chains are his anchor and his torment. And it is this torment that spurs his rage, causing him to lash out at you. He will not let you leave. He will never let you leave, and you will never be able to make him understand. I, however, can. My bargain for you is this. Go meet with the sunken one, and when he tries to destroy you, destroy instead the chains that bind him. Release his anchors, and I will treat with him myself. He will gain absolute control over the island, you shall become its ruler. This I promise. The Sunken One will protect this island in your name for 500 years, and you will owe him nothing. No sacrifices and no rituals. In return, I shall appear at the end of those 500 years to claim the island's crown for myself. Build a kingdom for me and bask in its infant's glory. Surely this is acceptable. That sounds kinda cool. I get to rule an empire, and then he takes it over when Brand is long dust. For a moment you ponder the demon's offer until he speaks up. You need not decide now. You cannot, after all, break the divine chains without my blessing. I shall watch your battles from afar. If you decide to accept my offer, simply strike the chains. When they shatter, that will mark the signing of our contract. Simple, nope. Now leave. the Demon Lord's Castle. The portal that carried you to Lord Barrow's castle is now closed, the trip unnervingly fresh in your mind. You can almost still feel his eyes boring through you. Alright, the next time we play, we'll be sure to hit up the Arid Gate. Alright, thank you very much for watching Tran Wins Bastard Bonds. I'll see you next time, where we take on the Arid Gate and what lies behind it. Arid Gate. A dry heat emanates from the sealed gate. It's difficult to force your lungs to take in the air. Whatever is creating the heat must be behind the gate. My nose is completely stuffed right now. Uh, so hopefully that won't be too bothersome for you. The pedestal is hot to the touch. There is an inscription on the very top. It reads, Entry is reserved for the bravest of souls. The chunk of slag you're carrying comes to mind. Will you place the guardian soul upon the pedestal? Let's solve this stuff again. Oh, yeah. Salamander's Gauntlet. Hot, dry air spills out of the entrance. This promises to be uncomfortable. After a brief search, you locate some kind of mechanism in a panel on the side of this statue. Oh, right, I'll need to work. Today is November 5th. He spends about a week being sick. I didn't even edit much. I still have roughly eight hours of Bastard Mons footage to edit. Now, she is not exactly my fighter here by any means, but I'm gonna put her in front anyways just to show you what my team is capable of. Now, if you don't, if you're just tuning in for the first time, Bran is stealthy, and if, even if the monsters were to see him, he would pretty much just murder them outright. Bran, you just chill. We'll pretend you don't exist as you go in, as my team goes in and murders everyone. But my characters are extremely powerful and extremely wealthy, so I'm not really worried about picking up random crap. So, yeah, she just shrugged off that spell, they both fumbled.
So I'm trying to have trouble getting my mouse to move up. It does not do fine tuning adjustments easily. Uh, it's a wireless mouse with a pretty hefty dead zone. I worry that this is going to make my mouse play in future games if I ever were to fix this or get another mouse. I worry it's going to make my mouse play a lot worse. You disconnect the pressure regulator and the fire dies out. You redirect the fuel into a hollow part of the statue, and the fires sputter out. getting her hit points back for all the thwart challenges that, that she's going through. So even though she's not my best fighter, she just took that hit very easily. She still has tons of hit points. She's got telekinetic, so disarm doesn't even matter. Yeah, I don't seem to be equipped with my any of my area effect weapons. I said I may have given up just using them because I'm being I'm being stealthy in general. Right now, I'm just sort of every now and then I think I periodically need to prove my character's ability to fight. I guess it kind of keeps things interesting. I don't know. There, well, that's enough. I think, I think Bray can go back to slaughtering everybody now. A quick search reveals an access panel and some inner mechanism. He gently shut off the fuel valve. Since she's telekinetic, I don't actually have to do this in whatever order. You kink a fuel line, and here's something further inside the mechanism break. Once you get past 100%, you get less XP. So I was at 103. Fixing that gave me up to 108. You spot a panel on the floor that appears to be out of place. It offers some kind of it offers access to some kind of mechanism. You hope you've hopelessly mingled whatever that mechanism was. If you click too fast, even if you're holding shift down and you never let go, it, it actually doesn't register and will treat it as a cautious move. I'll take that, might as well. I doubt any of these is actually part of that puzzle, but I guess I'll go ahead and collect it. I'm just gonna go on a limb here and assume that the skull is not part of the puzzle. Oh wait, maybe if I take the ruby out of my porter. Searching the chest a second time, you find a small switch hidden under the lip. There we go.
depleted battery you found looks like it would fit perfectly in the impression of this jackal's chest. The battery clicks into place and the fire jet shuts off. Fire Exarch. This is a thing I've been farming since the beginning of the game. But you can talk to you. I can talk to you, huh? I cannot telekinetically talk to you. So here's what I'll do. I doubt I need to do all of this, but hey. Just because I can. Oh, you're gonna back up now, huh? That's okay, because Brand's still the tank. Is it you who dares stir my flames and then quench them? I will not stand for such trifling. Meet your doom, mortal fools. Oh, please. Whatever. Yeah. She's the weakest one, and you're still crippled by that strike. I have now obtained a Vulcan. Reach 1, physical 50, max line 50, max mana, and pain strike. It's an okay weapon, but I'll put it in the porter for now. These things I'll pretty much want to sell. Might keep that, but that's about it. All this other stuff is junk to sell. And that's it. I feel out of practice, so I always feel a little more hesitant, but I have 181% XP for this place. Not that any of these characters can use XP. And I'm leaving with a Vulcan, another fabled weapon. Oh, I guess these guys can. When they get their bond, I'll probably reskill them and then make them even better. I want them to be 55, 55, 1, 38, 37, 36. So it's a uh, 34 or 49. Let me uh, pause the recording, check out that everything that is being recorded correctly and safely, and then we'll resume.